All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another episode of We Create Music. I am your host, B. Vaughn, and today we have Rhodey, producer, engineer, multi-talented. <laughs> I mean, this guy has, he, he does it all. He's a one-stop, he's a one-stop shop. So, Rhodey, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. I appreciate Absolutely. you having me on. Of course. Super of course. excited. Super yes, sir. Excited. So, if you wouldn't mind... Tell the audience who you are, about your background, how you got started. Yeah, so I'm Rody. I'm an artist, producer, engineer, everything he just said. Um, I was born in Waterloo, Iowa. I moved to Atlanta in about 2005 when I was like nine years old. So I'm pretty much from Atlanta, but you know, I got to claim Iowa because nobody else is going to. So yeah, man, <laughs> I'm putting Iowa on the map. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm here, to, here to make good music. Here to make good music. That's what's up. Yeah. So how'd you get started? I got started through... Um, when I was in high school, I always sort of gravitated towards the English classes and in particular poetry. And mm -hmm. whenever I would write my, my poems, I would try to make a game out of, oh, how many things can I rhyme? And so when I did them in front of the class, people would come up to me like, oh, dude, you sound like Eminem. And I'm like, really? Oh, OK, that's kind of uh -huh. cool. So just kind of kept going. And then mm -hmm. next thing I know, I just totally got bit by the hip hop bug and have not looked back since. Mm. That's what's up. Yeah. So so I read in my, in my research okay. that growing up, you weren't really allowed to listen to no to i wasn't dude you did do your research I did. yeah I, where'd you find that's crazy a lot of places no um <laughs> no i i was actually not allowed to listen to rap my uh <laughs> my parents thought it was uh, it was violent music and that mm -hmm. i shouldn't be listening to that and you know it's i don't know it's kind of funny looking back now because that just made me want to listen to it so much more in, partic in particular, <laughs> like, I would like run downstairs like early in the morning and like hopefully try to catch a little D12 music video for that was that, my band song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, totally, totally made me want to do it. So you know, shout out my parents for totally backfiring that one. <laughs> <laughs> Total backfire. Yeah, hey, that's how it is sometimes. We kind of get into our parents usually tell us, "No, you can't do something." Yeah, and it's like, oh, oh really? That makes me want to do it oh, more, I can't. <laughs> more and more. You know. That's kind of, for me, that's how it was when I was growing up. My mom would say, don't do that. I'm free. Don't do that. push the big red button. Don't, don't touch it. the stove. Don't push it. Don't touch the iron. <laughs> like, right. So, well, at least, you know, it, it backfired. Oh, so completely. So that kind of has put you in the position that you are in, yep. in today. So you moved from, from Waterloo when you were very young, right? When you were five. Yeah, I was like nine years old. Okay. So pretty, pretty young. Pretty okay. young. All right, cool. And so you moved to Atlanta. Um, so talk about that experience growing up in in Atlanta with the music scene. So I didn't. I to be to say that I grew up in Atlanta with the music scene probably wouldn't be a, a fair assessment on my part on my part because I didn't really go full into the music until late in high school and mm. really college is when I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is it. And so when I moved to Atlanta, I w I hated it. I was so mad at my parents. I was like, why'd you take me away from all my friends? Like, mm. like any nine year old kid, I'm just like, where are my friends at? Like, I don't know anyone here. It's hot. I don't want to be here. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you have. You're, yeah, St. Louis. Um, yeah, so um, I, I was pretty mad, but I gradually got used to it. I made some really good friends. And then, you know, once once I knew that music was what I wanted to do, I look back and I'm like, wow, so blessed to be here. Mm. Cause to be in Atlanta right now and to watch it go from, a, you know, it's always been a pretty musical city in my mm. opinion, but to go from pretty musical city to the culture center of hip hop in like however many years, it's crazy. I'm blessed to be here. Mm. So That's looking right. back, I'm super grateful. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of the things that you're currently doing today to take advantage of the music scene here in Atlanta? So as far as specifically in Atlanta, um, I try to do as much with A3C as I can. Mm -hmm. I try to, you know, if, if I can pop up to an event, I'm going to be there. There's always something going on in the city. If I'm not working, then, then I'm going to be doing that. Um, and then beyond that, I'm really just stacking on my catalog. My plan right now is to just put out as much music as I can, find out what cities that music is hot in, and then tour those cities. And hey, that's pretty what's simple up. plan. Pretty simple plan. Yeah. Like, I mean, it sounds so so simple but i'm sure there's a lot of work that goes into oh, yeah. you know figuring out what cities you have the most listenership in mm -hmm. and then getting things together to be able to go and tour those cities booking yep. travel all yep. those different things yep. right so how are you kind of juggling all those things today to help forward your career i don't even know how i'm juggling it all today. <laughs> um just trying to move the needle every day i know mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a vague answer but 
I really don't have like a, a it's X, Y, Z, you know, one, two, three steps. It's, it's really just like whatever needs to be done in that day, in that moment to move the needle forward. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. And so if that means reaching out to a talent buyer at a venue, I'm going to do that. If it means mixing a song, I'm going to do that. Writing a song, whatever. So just as I really base it on my gut feeling, like, am I moving forward? And, you know, am I making the smart moves to get to my longer term goals? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a very, uh, I'm a checklist guy. So I like to ah, okay. I got my short term goals that are all pointing towards the long term ones. So as long as I'm checking off those short ones, then I, I figure I'm good to go. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you got to have some type of system that kind of helps you move forward. Yeah. Because most people just haphazardly just say, yeah, hey, okay, so today I'm just going to get up and kind of do X, Y, and Z without a real, yeah. a real plan. And mm -hmm. I kind of think that's what separates people to say whether they make it or, or truly not. Absolutely. I mean, some like luck, yeah, like meeting yeah. the right person. But for the most of us, it's strategically planning out what our process is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah, and you you know you need some foresight in this business, especially because it's it can be tough when you're an independent artist mm -hmm. and you know, you look around and you know you don't have millions of fans, you don't have millions of dollars. You you have to be able to look forward five, three, ten years and be able to see what is that going to look like, and to to be able to plan in a in a smart and strategic way. How are you going to get there? Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of strategizing, like you were just saying. That's right. Yeah, a lot of foresight. That's right. All right, good. So what made you go from being an artist to being an engineer, a producer, uh, your, your your own manager, your booking agent, <laughs> your lawyer? Your, I mean, so I know I'm kind of stressing a little bit, but what made you decide to, to kind of take that route versus, you know, having an engineer or having a, a – or whatever they may be? Uh, to put it simply, being tired of being broke every time I wanted to make music, just to put it as yeah. simple as possible. I get I, that. I, it took me entirely too long to figure out that spending a thousand dollars to you know record a few songs doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not mm. making a ton of money. And so um, I really just kind of realized, and honestly, shout out to Russ on this. Um, you can really do a lot by yourself. Mm. And watching Russ has come up really drove that point home like i always believed in that but like watching someone like russ who just like produced me like everything mm -hmm. and then to be able to do what he's done it really made it click for me on, on another level and he's from the same the same part of town that i'm in oh, like really? yeah yeah him and him and boogies used to pull up to my high school and hand out cds so like, <laughs> like i really like i saw that and mm. to see him now playing staples it's like whoa okay you can really do this and also shout out to my homie lucas connor he, um, Luke is a big, another big reason why I took that step to be my own producer and engineer, mm. but to bring it full circle, just realizing that if I'm trying to essentially be a business, I have to make smart business moves. And if mm. your product can cost, you know, $6,000 or $0, you should probably go with the $0 option. It just makes mm. a little more sense, especially in the beginning. If you can do it yourself, do it yourself. So do you think that impacts quality of the product that you're putting out? Yes, absolutely. Um, for better and worse. Um, for better, I have 100% creative autonomy. I can, True. if I want a specific type of beat, I can do it. If I want this reverb to sound like this, I can do it. You know, I don't have to try to communicate with an engineer, you know, oh, can you like, you know, make this sound like that? Because, you know, a lot of things can get lost in, lost in translation mm -hmm. and... It also helps with the speed of the process because you don't have to wait on another person to mm. do their part. You're self-sufficient. And so if something's taking too long, you got no one else to it's blame but you. yourself. Yeah, it's on That's you. Right. It's on you. Um, now, to flip side that, it can also, there's a learning curve associated with doing everything yourself. It right. you know, be unreasonable to expect to be, you know, like Timbaland, the second you start touching mm -hmm. the keyboard, and I didn't just start producing, but you know, I did just start doing everything myself. Ah, okay. So you know, there is a learning curve, and and to sort of drive home a broader point, you got to believe in yourself, especially when it looks rough, or especially in the early process. You mm -hmm. have to believe in yourself and your progress. You have to be able to again look out 
a year, two years and be able to say, look, I might not be where I want to be right now, but I will if I just stay down. Mm. And so, you know, you asked about the quality, but really, I think it's deeper than that. It's, it's, it really teaches you self-belief because, okay. man, when you finally hit release on DistroKid or TuneCore and that song goes to iTunes and Spotify and you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I did that. I did everything with that. Mm. I didn't need any help. That's a damn good feeling. Mm. That's a damn good feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like Dr. Dre. That's kind of how Dr. Dre did all his stuff in the very beginning, right? So he was, you know, an art. He was a DJ. He was an artist. Yeah. He was, you know, I remember the scene in, in Straight Out of Compton when Jimmy, uh, I mean, asked him, you know, who produced this? He was like, I did. You know, who mixed this? He was like, I did. I did. <laughs> he was like, who mastered this? He was like, come on, man. He said, I did. Yeah. You know, so in this day and age it's easy for people i mean back then they had digital tape and you know uh, analog tape and all those different things but today we it's easy for us to kind of be in the box yeah and kind of mixing in not inside of our computer we don't really have a lot of the challenges that they had yeah and back then when it comes to mixing and mastering and putting out product mm -hmm. right dude it has never been a better time to be an independent artist ever mm. never ever ever has it been better because well, why can, do you say that because you can make you can go platinum off of songs on your laptop it's it's wild i mean i was just talking about russ but let's not even talk about russ let's talk about big names let's talk about jay-z and kanye mm -hmm. watch the throne was recorded in a hotel room yeah they didn't go to a big studio they recorded in that hotel room same with hotline bling one of the biggest songs of that year mm. that was recorded in a hotel room you don't need to spend crazy amounts of money just to put out music and you don't need to be signed to a label to put out music you it's crazy you. You can look, there's an app on your phone. Of course, I'm blanking on the name as I'm, as I'm talking about this. There's an app on your phone that you can distribute music. It's wild. Mm. The stuff that you can do now as an artist, you can be, like you were just saying, you can be your own producer, engineer, uh, writer, mm. and distributor. When has that ever been possible? Before you had to hope and pray that a label finds you and can bring you out and develop right. you and right. you know you put out one song and if that song doesn't pop oh too bad you get dropped from the label your right. music career is over right. it's not like that anymore you can do you can do it all yourself and it's crazy <laughs> it's How, crazy it's just wild instagram facebook you can reach millions of people for a mm -hmm. very small investment it's right. never been a better time that's right and the key is just being consistent yes right i mean you can sit in your basement and, and oh, I'm want to do this, I want to do that. But if you're not consistent with it, yeah, I don't know if your career is really going to take off in the way that a person hopes. It won't. You know, but if you're consistent and you have that drive and you have that focus, oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're betting on, you know, you can put in a little bit of work, you know, once every, I don't know, a couple of weeks, you should go play lottery too because that's the game you're playing. Like, it just doesn't <laughs> make sense. You know, like you can't read a book about doing push-ups and expect to get strong. You can't like go to the gym once every month and expect mm -hmm. to be nice and fit and strong. No, you got to be in there. You got to be in there. You got to grind. You got to yeah. put in the work. And, and even if it's not for, you know, speaking about the gym for three hours a day, you're, you know, oh, pumping iron. Oh, I'm getting huge. Dude, a little bit goes a long way if you do it mm -hmm. every day. <laughs> a little bit goes a long way. Consistency. Yes. Baby steps. Yeah. That's just right. breaking down that barrier like water over rock, just over time, mm. breaking it down, getting closer and closer and closer. That's, I hope y'all got that. That's that's knowledge. That's facts. That's nuggets. Y'all need that. Absolutely. Today is a, is, is a great day to be an independent, Never been better. independent artist. Y'all need to take advantage of this. I'm talking to you. If you have not pulled the trigger on your career, do it. What are you waiting for? Right. No one's coming to save you. No label's coming. Do it yourself. Put yourself on. You can. Why not? That's right. Do you like DJ, what DJ Khaled said? He said, start a label. Sign yourself. Yes. Like, that song made me quit one of my jobs. Oh, really? Dead ass. I listened to that song. And hearing <laughs> Nas say that, I'm like, dude, I need to quit. <laughs> he said, I need to quit. Dude, literally the next day I walk in, I'm like, I'm out of here. I quit, I quit my job because of that song. So shout out to Nas. Shout out to DJ Khaled. <laughs> hey, songs provide inspiration and motivation yeah, yeah, for things. How they do. Okay, so think so. considering all those things we just talked about, how does the music business tie into all that? Uh, in every way, shape, and form possible. Um, I, I mean, that's the game we're playing. We're in the music business. Mm -hmm. um, and side note about the music business, there's a reason it's called the music business 
business. Be about your business, y'all. Like, take the time to do research. Like, yes, you can do all this stuff on, on your phone, whatever, whatever, all those mm -hmm. great things I was just talking about. But a label might still come in the picture and get you to sign a contract that totally ruins your life. So yeah. take the time to learn the business. Do you know about publishing? No. Do you know how to book a venue? Do you know these things? If not, Google it. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to not know the basics of this business. You don't need to. You don't need to be Joel Katz when it comes to you know entertainment law. But you should have a pretty good working knowledge. You should know when it's time to get a lawyer involved. You should know if you're getting the royalties that you're owed. You mm -hmm. should know about you know BMI, ASCAP. You should know what these things are. And so, how does the music business tie into it in every way? Because that's the game we're playing. If you want to be good at basketball, you've got to know the rules of basketball. Period. Period. That's, That's just right. it. And uh, do you find that a lot of people don't take the time to learn about the music business? Hell yeah. It drives me crazy. It drives me so crazy. Like, dude, I get I get artists in my DM like asking me, how do you put your music on Spotify? Yeah. That's Google. That's an easy Google search. And it <laughs> drives you step by step. Me crazy. Oh, you said you use DistroKid? How much is DistroKid? Go to the website. Go to the website. It's set on the pricing. It has exactly how much it, it is. It has tiers <laughs> for the different things. Yeah. Baffling. How many people are just completely unwilling to put in the time to do some research? Mm -hmm. It is baffling. You know what kills me sometimes? <laughs> what's oh, that? man. What, what's killing you? It's like, so I go, you know I go to a lot of networks. That's kind of how we met. Yeah. We met at the A3C uh, event that they had. And I remember sitting in the lobby and you came over, you sat down and we started talking yep. and I, that's how we connected. But it kills me that when I go to events like A3C or whatever it may be, not just to name A3C, but that's a, a huge one. Yeah. That with this ASCAP, doesn't matter. Is the fact that you have a lot of people in the audience that are asking the very basic <laughs> questions that you can pick up oh, man. a book. Okay. <laughs> this Music, is called money book. and success. <laughs> this is a book you can read. That talks about all those different things, songwriting, composing, music, publishing, royalties, everything is in one of these books. And you can just pick one up and it answers pretty much all of your questions. Yeah. But I find that people ask the most basic Dude, and even if it's questions. not a book, if you hate reading, you can't read, you fall asleep and when you read two okay. words, Google it. There's no reason to not know these things. If you don't want to read the books, Google it. Right. Period. Go to YouTube University. <laughs> yeah, go to YouTube. I mean, like, there's a ton of stuff out there. Yeah, and again, you don't need to be, you know, a world-renowned expert on every little thing, but you should know mm. a little bit at least. At yeah. least. If at you're least. serious about wanting to be, you know, a breakout artist, you need to know these things. Mm -hmm. Do your research. Do your research. Study. Do your research. Yes. Perfect advice. I mean, that's perfect. You got to just do that. That's, that's crazy if you don't. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, if you're not doing your research, you're literally sitting there <laughs> hoping it works out. That's craziness. That's crazy. Absolutely craziness. That's right. So what's yeah. on the horizon for Rody? Um, What's on the horizon for me? I'm just, right now what my plan is I'm stacking up my catalog and then when it's time to start releasing, it's go mm. time. You know, I've been releasing music. I'm still releasing music, but I'm um, right now, as we're doing this interview, I'm taking a little bit of a step back mm -hmm. from the, the public light or whatever to really build up my catalog so that I can just keep the music coming. Cause I don't want to be I don't want to be that guy who releases a song and then I have to scramble to come up with the next one. Uh, like I'm trying to I'm trying to help yeah. myself out a little bit, you know, yeah, be a little more forward thinking like we're talking about. That's right. So put in the hard work and then come out and then kinda J. Cole does that. That's yeah. the thing that kills me about it. <laughs> is that He'll come out, he'll go and work for months, come out and then come out with an album and then disappear. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, what's he doing? He's, you're working. Yep. You know, you're building up your, your, your catalog, you're your stockpiling your music so yeah. that when it's time to release, you got things you can put out and you got things that you can market. It's a good strategy because let's say, let's say I put out a song tomorrow and it blows up, it goes viral. I got mm -hmm. millions of plays. If I don't have the next one lined up, Dude, I could fall off by the time it t by the time I put out the next one. That's right. It's, because it's, it's, it's that it's that fast. That's the world we live in. We live in ADD society where, you know, if you're not constantly putting stuff in front of people, hey, listen to this, listen to this, mm. they're gonna forget about you. Look back in the last 
Looking back at the the double XL freshman cipher from six years ago, and you tell me how many of those artists are still around today. I don't even know who was on the cover. I don't either. I, I that was an arbitrary one. So anyone that's on that <laughs> list, you know, knows respect. But but seriously, like the point is, people fall off every day. Don't be that guy. Yeah. You have to you have to be able to strike while the iron's hot. Mm. Just keep it coming, right? Man. Keep it coming. Yeah. The consistency. Exactly. Yeah. So. For our audience members who may not be familiar with with who you are and what you do, just give them a little bit about the music you've done, uh, the videos that you've been in, and things like that. Yeah, so um, when it comes to the music, I, I try to write about whatever's going on in my life at that moment. Um, I'm not going to be that guy who's up there talking about some crazy stuff that I've never actually been through for the sake of hoping to sell some records. Right. That's not me. It's never been me. never will be me. If I'm talking about something on a record, I have to believe in every single word. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me the other day, where do you find the inspiration for your music? And I told him, it's whatever I want to talk about right then. Because the way I see it, it's it's more than just a hot song. It's like, I'm saying this to myself a, a lot. I have mm -hmm. to listen to the song hundreds of times. I have to rehearse it. I have to perform it in front of people. If I can't live with what I'm saying for years, mm -hmm. then I can't say it. Because it has to be true to me and what, to what I got going on. And so if you go and listen to my music, you're going to, you're gonna get the keys to the keys to life, really. That's the way I that's the way I like to put it. Um, I'm not telling you to go spend a bunch of money on jewelry or nothing crazy like that. I'm telling you, stay dedicated to your craft. You know, build a legacy for when you're no longer here. You mm. know, uh, adapt to when life throws crazy stuff at you. Don't worry about what the other side is doing. Focus on you. Those are all song names, by the way. You should look them up. <laughs> but uh, not for real. Um, just whatever, whatever's going on in my life at the moment, that's what the music is going to be about. Okay. So if you listen to my music, you're going you're gonna to hopefully get some, some little gems and nuggets that you can apply to your own life. But also you're going to get a little snapshot of what's going on in my mind, in my life at that moment. So it's real. It's, I'd like to it's, say it's so. It's real. Yeah. It's about life experience. It's the things that you're kind of going through today. Exactly. And that's what you write about. Exactly. And I think today, well, I know back when, when I was coming up, that meant a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. Because I could connect with maybe a rapper who was in New York who was kind of going through the similar things that yeah. I was going through. I can't really connect with a lot of rappers today because I'm not going through that. And I don't yeah. know if if the generation today are going through those same things. I think they just like how the beat sound. And, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know, honestly, but <laughs> I like music that is, that's real, that yeah. you can feel, that has a message, that has content, that has meaning, that can give purpose and yeah, I think um, it kind of reminds me of that, that song, um, Pound Cake, the Drake intro, mm -hmm. where he's talking about um, only the real music is going to last. All that other bullshit is here today, gone tomorrow. Gone tomorrow. It's a fact. That's right. That's it's right. It's a fact. It's right. Just look, because the artists who are kind of out today that are kind of following the trends. <laughs> See where they're at in five years. They're not going to be. They're going to be in love and hip hop. Yeah. Ah, they're going to be love and hip hop. That's what in Jay, fact. Shout out to J. Cole. <laughs> for, for that line from yeah. 1985 but yeah I mean that's kind of where their career is going to be it's going to be in a place where it's not sustainable or it's going to be in a career where they kind of have to do certain things to yeah. kind of stay in the limelight but you know so speaking of that let's talk about that a little bit so adaptability because you mentioned it right so what are some things that a, someone needs to be able to do in this industry to be adaptable you need to learn to get punched in the freaking mouth and keep moving mm. that's to put it very broadly, that's really what this business is. It's basically, you know, repeatedly getting punched in the face by, you know, a hundred different people at, at a time and being able to just keep on going. Cause you're going to get told, no, you're going to get told you suck. You're going to get told, no, you can't get that venue. Uh, you're going to be told no 82 million times. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to say, whatever, I'm not going to listen to that and just keep moving. Now that's not to say to not listen to anybody. You can't like, la 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 la. You can't do that either. Cause mm -hmm. maybe, there's some advice there that you should take. But as far as learning to adapt, you, you need to learn to roll with the punches and to, to like if, if a show doesn't go well, you need to know why. You need mm -hmm. to take the time to reflect on, okay, well, what, what would have made that show go well? So being able to know when you're off course and to correct course is key to success in, in any business, but especially in this one. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to to adapt to 
the trends in the music as well. And we were just talking about following trends. That's not what I mean. What I mean is you can't like, let's say you're, you're a hip hop head. That's great. And you know, great, you know, do boom bap stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be a mainstream artist, you need to be aware of what people want to hear at the same time. And so sometimes it's about humbling yourself about like, you know, maybe, maybe I need to switch up, switch up some stuff just a little bit, you know, still keep it true to yourself, but to also just be aware of what is going on in music and to be able to, to apply that to your music. If, if that's what you want, if you just want to put out music that, that you like, and that, you know, maybe six of your friends like, cool, that's great. If that's your ambition, awesome. I have no problem with that, but you need to be realistic and you need to make mm -hmm. sure that your actions match your ambitions. So if you want to be Drake, you need to look at, okay, well, what is Drake doing? You know, how can I apply some of what, what he might be doing or what whoever might be doing mm -hmm. if that's where you want to be? And so you need to be able to adapt with the times. And, you know, that goes back to putting out music on your phone and working through your mm -hmm. laptop too. You know, if, right. you're, if you're still doing the old model of, you know, put out an album once every three years that you spend 10 grand on, it's probably not such a good yeah. strategy in 2020. And I don't think that that model works for the the independent artists. Hell no, it doesn't. It's not gonna. That's not Hell gonna work. No. Independent artists, we don't have the same level of distribution yeah. that maybe Drake has. Right? We'll have yeah. that. You know, Drake can drop an album today, and it's on every major radio station yep. across the world. And I mean, then he's torn. Yeah. And he's you know, there's marketing behind it. There's I mean, but for us, we. We're looking, okay, I got these bills over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got this album that I got. And we got to kind of juggle all those different things to make sure it all works. I think there's another point to be made there too. You need to be realistic about where you're at. You know, you can't be comparing yourself to Kendrick Lamar if you're not on Kendrick Lamar's level. You might not be able to do the mm -hmm. same things that he's doing. So Kendrick is the type of artist, he might put out, you know, an amazing body of work and then totally disappear for two years. Yeah, he will. So yeah. that's probably not going to work if you're an independent artist. So you just got to be realistic. And, you know, if you're an independent artist, again, I feel like I've said this a million times, you just need to stay in people's faces, keep putting out music, keep putting out content, music videos, whatever it is, just stay in people's faces. You need to be realistic about where, where are you in your career and stop worrying about what, you know, Justin Bieber or Ariana Grande or Drake or, you know, Chance the Rapper might be doing, you know, maybe look around you. Who's like, who's like one step ahead of you? Like there's, there's an artist in your city, no matter where you're listening, mm -hmm. who you know is he's mm -hmm. popping, but he's not like popping. You know what I'm saying? So maybe look at what this guy's doing. How did he get to this level from here? Those are the types of moves you need to be making. Don't try to go from, from A to Z yeah. when you're not when you're not there. You know, you need again, be realistic. Be realistic. Yeah. That's great advice. Great advice. You know, we end every show with me asking you know, what would be the one thing that you would tell somebody coming into the music industry? But you've given us gems upon Thank you. upon gems upon gems. And so let's talk about where people can find you. Okay. Uh, I'm all over social media, at underscore Rody, Twitter, Instagram, you know, the whole nine. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Rody, R-O-T-E-Y. You find me on RodyMusic.com, R-O-T-E-Y Music.com. Yep, you can find me anywhere, man. Just That's right. If you can't remember any of that, just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. R-O-T-E-Y, yes, Rody. That's right. Yes, sir. Well, sir, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, man. No thank doubt. you. Of course. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in today. And we'll catch you next time on We Create Music.